Have you ever dreamt of becoming a PHP core contributor, but felt overwhelmed by the prospect of creating RFCs, maintaining extensions, or writing C code? Worry no more. In this talk, you'll discover how to impact the PHP core meaningfully by writing tests without the need for any C code. Florian promised us to give an interactive session, and we hold him to his word. Maybe he won't dance, but he will live to code a test, demystifying the process and equipping you with essential testing techniques. Florian Engelhardt is on the stage. Let's listen. So, uh, welcome every one of you to growing the PHP Core one test at a time. Uh, with me, my name is Florian. I'm uh, working at Datadog, where I'm building a continuous profiler for PHP language itself. I'm an open source contributor. I'm contributing to um, stuff that I use or use to my day-to-day -day life. That's, for example, uh, GraphQLite, uh, PHP Unit, PHP itself, by writing tests, documentation, fixing small bugs. And currently, I'm trying to push some observability APIs. And I'm doing so, although I'm married with five kids. That being said, if you do not have five kids at home, you'll definitely have time to contribute to open source. <laughs> okay, um, why, why I'm here today. So basically, I got introduced to PHP in September 2000. Um, that's 23 years from today. And my entire professional career is based on the fact that PHP exists. Um, with a few exceptions, in exchange for money, I was able to do um, I was able to, to solve all the problems that, I, that came in my way using PHP. Um, I did a lot of other languages as well, but like, I was able to solve like 90% of the stuff that I, that problems that I got exposed to using PHP. And it's very fair to say that um, all the money that I earned, all the friends that I made, the person that I became today is based on the fact that PHP exists, that in the 90s PHP was built. Um, people started contributing to the language, people contribute today, and will so for the foreseeable future, hopefully. And um, sooner or later it came to me that it should be giving something back to the community. And uh, that was in the year 2017. <clears throat> that was when I stumbled on the PHP Test Fest. The 2070 edition was the last edition so far, and that was organized by Ben Ramsey, Semi Powers, and some others. And the idea was just to write tests for PHP. And um, I had no idea how to write tests for PHP, so I read the, the web page, and I found out that um, tests for PHP are written in PHP. Um, so you don't need to add, you don't need to think of a new language feature, you don't need to create an RFC, uh, you can just find something to test, write a test for it, and make a pull request. And I immediately knew that this was a, an option for me to give something back to the community. So, when you want to write tests for PHP, you got to start with uh, compiling the compiling PHP from source code or getting the, the source code from PHP because it holds all the tests. So the source code from PHP is hosted on GitHub, so you can just git clone. Uh, probably it's a good idea to create a fork on GitHub before you clone because there is not there's only few people that can push directly to the PHP repository. Um, then you run buildconf that creates the configure script for you. Uh, then configure, then make J, and after that you have your PHP binary. And this is something I prepared already because it takes a few moments. And um, in this directory I have the PHP checkout, I ran uh, build conf configure and make already, and then we have a PHP binary. Um, so there's two things you can see. First of all, it's already PHP 8.4. Uh, that's just because it's the latest master branch. And uh, you also see I compiled this version um, after lunch break today. So this is the latest as you can get currently. Uh, this is also how you can deploy uh, the master branch PHP version to your production systems. Please don't, but you can. <laughs> okay, um, now that we have the PHP version, the next thing is we need to run the test. Uh, to run the test, the next thing you just do is make test. Um, there is this test PHP args argument that you can give the test runner. If you run just make test, it will execute one test after the other. This will take a while. Uh, you can start parallel um, concurrent uh, runners using the test PHP args argument. And that's what we're going to do next. Look at this. Like this. 
Um, so we execute make, uh, then test PHP args is uh, dash j10, which means we want 10 concurrent test runner, and then you just hit enter and it will um, start the test runners. In the lower left corner, you can see the number of tests that are currently executed, and the number of tests to be executed, and the number of concurrent test workers. And we hopefully see a lot of pass. The next thing we see currently is that the number of concurrent test workers is, shutting, is running is running low. It's shutting test workers are shutting down uh, when they are ready, and there should be some tests. I don't know if I set my Wi-Fi setup, so maybe there is some tests that fail. All right, we have our answer already. So, what you get in the end is I need to find my cursor. You get this nice test result summary. So. This test result summary shows you the number of extensions skipped. That's 46 extensions that have not been tested in this run because they have not been compiled with this PHP version. And then there is 27 extensions um, that have been tested because they were around. Overall, you see that there is 18,706 tests in the PHP repository, of which we run 13,209. And then you see there is four tests that failed, nine that were expected to fail. Um, so overall, there is a 99.9% .9 success rate, which is good. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the good thing I also think is that the, um, the test suite, now that we parallelized it, only took 37 seconds on this laptop, which is pretty fast. Um, the next thing you get is for all those sections, for warnings, failures, and expected failures, you get a summary as well for this. So you see here the expected fail test summary. And this is the list of uh, tests that were run, but they were expected to fail. They did, so everything is good. Um, and there is, for example, the first one is a test on open base tier configuration, and back there you see there is an X fail reason stating that this test is, should currently fail because open base tier cannot delete a sim link uh, to a profited file. And there you see also there's a C also bugs and then two bugs number. And you can go to the um, to bugspeech.net and find those numbers and read more about why this test currently is expected to fail. The next thing, we had four failures, and we see them here. Um, these are at least the first three of them probably fail or timed out because my laptop is not um, in the Wi-Fi, so they just time out. These last one, the XML writer, open your eye, I have no idea why that's failing currently. Probably we should have a look. And that's, that's what you get when running the tests. So. And this is the slide in case the live demo failed, but it didn't. So what does the test look like? Um, the test that we currently executed look like this. This is a stripped down example. And um, let's go through this um, uh, case by case. So basically, a, this is a PHPT file, and this is a ASCII file divided into section. The first section is the test section. This is the name of the test. It should be relatively short. Describe what you're doing, what you want to test. In this case, we just say we want to test the string link function. If you have um, more stuff to write, um, like, I don't know, because you're doing some fancy stuff there, there is a description section that you can use to write down why you're doing the stuff, how you're doing it. Um, then we already saw earlier in the test run that some extensions have been skipped. So if certain extensions are not compiled into the PHP binary that you're running the tests on, uh, it will skip those tests. And you can express this using the extension section and just write down the extension um, that you are depending on then the test runner will not run your test because it makes no sense, the test will fail anyway. Uh, next up is a skip if section. Uh, what the PHP test runner will do, it, it will um, extract the skip if section and run that with the PHP version under test. And then it matches the output. And when the output starts with skip, it will skip the test. And when the output starts with x fail, it will run the test and expect it to fail. Uh, next up is the file section. This is the actual test. This is the thing we want to want to test. And um, the file section will be extracted from the um, test runner and then called in isolation. And the output of that PHP script that we execute here will then be matched against the content of the expect section. And it has to match um, exactly to pass the test. In case you have some, let's say, variable stuff in the output, um, let's assume we only care that the test gives us back a integer, but we don't care about the length of the, uh, the we don't care about the actual length, we just want to know that it's an integer data type. You could use expect f instead of expect. 
uh, expectf allows you to use the substitution tags that you know from printf. So you could write int and then press int d. Um, that would also match. It would render this test useless, but it would work. And another alternative is expect regex instead of expect, which would allow you to uh, place a regular expression, and then uh, the test runner will match the regular expression against the output from the file. And if that matches, the test will also uh, succeed. So you could write dot asterisk, and it would match. Everyone would be happy. The test would be useless. And last but not least, we have the clean section. The clean section is just here, though, so that you can clean up after yourself. So if you create files um, on a disk, um, some other temporary stuff that you have here, um, which might interfere with the next text run, you can clean up in the clean section. Uh, one thing you need to be aware of is, although this it looks like one PHP T file, it looks like all this stuff is just in one file, those sections will be called in isolation from the test runner, meaning if you create a temporary a variable in the file section, the variable will not exist in the clean section anymore. Okay, uh, next up is the question, well, what do we test? So um, luckily when I started, there was gcaf.php.net uh, where we had a code coverage report. Uh, that got retired as of PHP 7.4. <laughs> Uh, next up was a code coverage report in Azure Pipelines. That got also retired. So the only uh, chance you have is to stay here <laughs> and wait till the end uh, of the talk where you find my blog, uh, dotbox.org, where you find a blog post about the topic that covers the uh, additional topic to create your own code coverage report. But when you create your own code coverage report with LCOV, it will look exactly like what I found um, in PHP 7.1 on gcaf.php.net. So um, I roamed the source code in like looking something that I could write a test and I found this. Um, the red means there is no test, there is the zeros in front of those lines, meaning there is like no coverage. And um, the, the function, if you look at this, this is the PHP function setlib get coding type. Um, if, you, if you go through the source code, we see there is an if statement checking if there is a parameter given. If you call it with a parameter, it will return nothing in this case. Um, and uh, besides that, it's basically a switch statement on the compression coding variable, and it will return either uh, the string gzip, when the compression coding variable is whatever we have in PHP sadly been calling gzip constant, or deflate or false. That's all it does. And um, the next thing for me was to find out what is, what is this function actually doing, so the, the bigger context of this thing. And um, who knows that PHP is doing magic output compression, or can do. Okay, so um, when a browser sends you an HTTP request, um, it sends you multiple uh, different HTTP headers, and one of those HTTP headers that is, uh, comes in place here is the accept encoding header. So the, your Chrome or your Firefox could indicate to the server that it would understand the gzip or deflate compression for the HTML response, for the HTTP response. And um, then there's an INI setting in PHP that you can turn on, and then PHP will do output compression. It, reads that the client uh, indicate that they, for example, understand gzip, and PHP will do the magic output compression then and send a gzip compressed output stream as a result for the HTTP um, response. Um, <clears throat> so next thing is I wanted to, to find out what test cases I need to build for, for all of this to work here. And um, <clears throat> the thing is we need to write a test for the absence of the accept encoding. When accept encoding header is not set, um, the function should return false. Uh, when it's set to cheese or deflate, it should return the one or the other. And when it's set to anything else, it should also return false. And we need to react on the setlib output compression INI setting. And I would say, uh, let's get our hands dirty on some source code. Ha, nice, that worked. Okay. Um, so there is one test that I prepared. Let me just see if I can zoom in. Yep, nice. Okay, <clears throat> so I, I prepared this one test for us. Um, the test is Celebic encoding type with gzip encoding, so uh, we want to test the, the Celebic encoding type function when the gzip encoding is being set by the client. Um, we want to, we are depending on the setlib extension, the setlib extension or clib extension is not compiled by default, so you just make this um, dependency explicit. And then we have the file section. We somehow in the file section need to um, fake an HTTP request. There is no HTTP request in the test, so we need to fake it. 
Um, one thing you can do is, or one thing that I uh, uh, found is when you, when you get an HTTP request, all the HTTP headers are exposed to userland in the dollar underscore server superglobal. So as with prefix with HTTP and then whatever the HTTP header was. So what we can do is we can just write to that dollar underscore server um, superglobal to the HTTP accept encoding key, the string gzip. Um, next thing we do is um, to make this explicit, it should be off by default, but just make it explicit is a call to INI set to disable setlib output compression. And the next thing is we call the um, setlib decoding type function. <coughs> um, I expect the setlib decoding type function when the output compression is turned off to return false, that would be C five lines below, um, that we match the output, the var dump output from that to Boolean false. Then the turn the output compression on again, and when the output compression is on and HTTP accept encoding is gzip, setlib decoding type should return gzip. That's what it should do. Now let's run this test and see how uh, far we get. So if you want to run one test, you can just say make tests equals and then give it either a directory or a file. In this case, we want to run this test and say test, not like this, like this, or not, like this. And uh, oh, look, it failed. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we see the, the, uh, the fail, we see the test, that's correct, it's our test name, it's our test file. Um, the good thing is fail fast, zero seconds, that's nice. Um, <clears throat> so I mentioned earlier that when you, um, when you run the test, the test runner will split up the PHPT file into different parts. Um, if the test fails, the test runner will leave you with all those uh, parts laying around. So what we can do is, there is different files uh, they're laying around, there is a diff file that holds the diff between the expectation and the actual output. There is the expect, exp file, which is the expectation. The log file is a log, uh, which we're going to look into. The out file is just the output of the PHP script. The one.php is just the content of the file section. And the, dot is, the PHPT is our PHPT file. And the dot .sh is a shell script that executes the PHP file and does all the magic. So let's have a look into the log file. Um, so, okay, the expected output is uh, what we had in our PHPT file, no surprise. Uh, we also see that in the actual output, the first Boolean false is correct. This is nice. Uh, and then instead of our string 4, we get a warning. Um, cannot change CLIP output compression headers already sent in foo1.php line 5. Let's have a look at line 5. Okay, line five is this one. So this is the line where, um, where we do the call to INI set and we cannot, um, we cannot change the setting anymore. Um, anyone has an idea what's happening here? Why we are not allowed to change the setting anymore? Exactly. Yes. Uh, what's happening is the following. The client indicated to us via the HTTP accept encoding that they would understand gzip. We turn output compression off and we do output. So PHP will not do output compression. We'll send the HTTP response headers and tell the client in the HTTP response headers that it won't do any kind of encoding. So if we would change the encoding then later and send part of the message plain and part of the message gzip, the client will not understand what's going on anymore. So we cannot change this. Uh, but that's not too complicated. We can just not do output and store this in a variable. And uh, var dump this out. This should work. So now we are not doing any output anymore. Looks good. So let's run the test and hope for it to succeed. Look at this. <laughs> it also already failed. Uh, okay. Uh, but we already know we can just look in the log file. And um, so what we see here is progress. <laughs> uh, the warning is gone. Uh, but there is still a Boolean false. Now that's interesting. The, the, the source code, like there's no warning anymore. There should be, it, it should be a string for gzip. Um, well, that's, that's a problem now. Um, the code looks all right. Um, so the, the only thing here that is interesting is still we don't have an 
uh, an HTTP request. So it could be that this might not work as we as we wanted it to be. I don't know. The the thing is you can do now, you have multiple options. And the first option is that we go to the um, source code file um, where we found the, the, the initial not covered function, uh, which is this version in PHP master branch. Uh, the only thing that changed, by the way, is there's no return, but the return throws now in case you call it with an argument. But besides that, there is a switch on the compression coding variable that's all the same. It should somehow work. Um, so what we can do now is we can say, okay, well, somewhere in this file, probably in this file, um, the compression coding variable needs to be written to. Because here we're reading, we're not changing that, but let's, let's look if you find it where, this, uh, where we read that one. So let's just skip through. Here's something, here's something, here's a return. Here we write to the CELIP coding type. So, um, so what we see here is there is a, if not compression coding, then there is this, um, let's say, just set type, PG, HTTP globals, whatever that is. There's a track var server, if that is an array or send is auto global, also something send string auto global underscore server. This looks a bit like it could be our dollar underscore server super global that we're accessing here from, from C code, from the engine itself. And then this also bakes the case a bit because arrays in PHP are hash maps. So this function, the send hash string find, is there to find the HTTP accept encoding key in the whatever track our server is, presumably our dollar underscore server. And uh, return the value, whatever there is, into ENC. And we wrote to dollar underscore server HTTP accept encoding. So it, it looks like it bakes the case. Then it does this convert string and in the end it writes to compression coding. Uh, so if we if we like if we read this and if you don't know too much about PHP internals and what's going on, this reads a bit like it should actually work because like there is uh, there is they read from track file servers it should do the trick but it doesn't. So the the next thing that I did is then uh, because I didn't understand anymore I got was blocked here um, was to reach out to some PHP developers. There is multiple things that you can go. You can go to uh, phpc.chat which will forward you to a Discord, I think. Or you can go to Room 11 on Stack Overflow, um, where a lot of PHP internal developers are. And you can uh, present them with your problem, which I did, um, stating my PHP test that I, like, and I also found this here, and this actually makes the case that my test should work. Everything is all right. But it's not working, so there is something that I don't know of. And um, they mentioned um, that PHP does copy and write. And we know this for functions. Um, but PHP also does copy and write for the um, auto-generated superglobals. So when we go back to our test case, in this line, in the dollar server HTTP accept encoding, when we assign the gzip to that key, uh, PHP will create a copy for the dollar server array for us in user space. Uh, and then, of course, not react to the changes anymore. <laughs> Uh, which is a problem. Uh, now the question is, uh, how do we? How can we inject something like the? We saw that like, and I got the confirmation that it's actually the dollar underscore server super global that's read right there, but we cannot influence it like this because this creates a copy for us in user space, and like PHP will just ignore the copy and not uh, not uh, not react to these changes. But what we can do is there's multiple other ex um, sections, and there is one section that comes in handy now, which is the env section. And the env section sets an environment variable that gets injected into the PHP process uh, before it gets executed. Um, now, this is not 100% technically correct. It's not 100% an HTTP request like with the fake with the dollar underscore server. But what happens with the HTTP accept encoding environment variable is that PHP will populate the dollar underscore server super global for us with this value. And then it's there and we don't need to uh, change it anymore from user space. So let's try it again with this new knowledge and see if it, it still fails. Okay, let's look at the log file. That's not the log file. That's the log file. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's really something different. Anyone has an idea what this could be now? Yes. <laughs> so it works. <laughs> yes. 
So the HTTP accept encoding is set to gzip, we turn compression off, we don't do any output, we set compression on. And here, when we do the first write and we do the output, what PHP will do is, uh, it will send an HTTP re response indicating that it will do gzip compression, and it will do gzip compression. That's what it does. So um, let's just fix this. And turn that off again. That should do it, I think. And run the test again. Oh, look, it passed. Success. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can. Yay, it works. Okay. Um, so this is the version for the GCP encoding that, uh, that's currently also in the, um, in the BHP source repository. And then there's other versions for uh, deflate, for, um, for BR. BR is broadly, which Chrome sometimes sent. In case an HTTP accepting code is set to BR, that function should return false because uh, CLIP uh, extension doesn't support BR, or there's no HTTP accepting coding at all. And uh, then I made a pull request, and that got merged a few weeks later, and uh, suddenly there's code coverage on these lines. Uh, that was then in PHP 7.3, so, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so what did I personally learn? Well, uh, the usual thing, um, I thought it was super easy to just write a test for the switch statement, uh, but it turned out it took, um, like, overall, uh, like net to net, it took me like a uh, few hours, but overall the process took like two or three days. Um, I also learned that super globals are copy and write, uh, which actually makes total sense if you think about it. Um, if you have all these HTTP uh, request headers in the dollar underscore server super global and you change them, and like the, you set the HTTP accept encoding from gzip to deflate just because you can, um, and uh, PHP would start sending a deflate compressed stream to the client that indicated that they only understand gzip, then you have a problem the client won't understand. So that makes totally sense. Um, the other thing I learned is that uh, there is modifier handlers for INI settings. Um, I usually, like I, I used to believe that if you call INI set, you will just like toggle a flag and that's it. Uh, but actually, if you call INI set, it will call a function in the engine itself that checks if you are allowed to change that value to your desired value, um, and then just not do it for you. And INI set tells you this. Um, so that's also nice. And you might ask the question, what do you gain when, when you would start, uh, like to start writing tests for PHP? So um, first of all, PHP will be more stable and reliable um, when you... When you create tests for PHP, like this functionality, it will not break uh, anymore, only on purpose. Um, but besides that, it will not break anymore. Um, you get a deeper understanding of how PHP works internally. Um, one example is um, that by checking for something that does not have tests, I found out that there is a zip archive class. Um, it's a while ago that I had to work with zip files in PHP, but the last time I did, I created a, a PHP class that basically wrapped system calls to use the uh, zip binary, and this was a, a security horror. So I'm pretty happy that there is a zip archive class. <laughs> and uh, one thing is also the PHP T file form. It is not only for writing tests for the PHP core itself, uh, but uh, PHP unit, uh, a lot, big part of PHP unit is tested using PHP T files, and PHP unit brings a PHP T uh, test runner for you. So you could also use the PHP T file form in your own, um, in your own products. And uh, last but not least, uh, the I think um, most interesting thing that you can uh, that you gain when you start writing tests for PHP is that you can tell anyone if they want to hear or not that you are a PHP contributor. <laughs> and that's all, folks. <clears throat> Um, if you want to know more, there's the phptestfest.org webpage, um, which holds like all the details about the test fest back then. Um, there's qa.php.net where you find the documentation on the PHP T file format. There's way more other sections that you can use for your tests. Um, you can find the slides on dotbox.org for this talk. And uh, you can also follow me on social media there. And if you're interested in more like 
internals on how PHP evolves. And um, there is a talk tomorrow from Roman, sitting here, uh, about the PHP Foundation uh, tomorrow in this room. Are there any questions? I have to give you the catch box. I don't know nothing about this thing. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, you, you could just do it on your own. I, I also think that like the, the LCAF thingy, so basically what you do is you, you recompile PHP, use with LCAF, and then you run make LCAF, and then you get a code coverage report. And this is an HTML report that you get, and I think you should be able um, to host this on, on uh, use a GitHub action to create a GitHub page that has the code coverage report. That should not be too much work, I think. And it should also be free because it's open source repository. Oh. Okay, I have a question. Uh, uh, is there any other uh, possibility of, of write uh, assertions? I, I mean, uh, what if a var dump will behave uh, different in the future? So it will uh, dump other output in other format. Um, if Vardam will change the behavior of the output, um, then I would say 99.9% .9 of tests will fail. So this will not change. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is there any possi other possibility to, to write assertions, expe expectation? So technically, the only thing that happens is that uh, the, the test runner will run the PHP code in the file section, and whatever it outputs match against the expect section. So what I some what the, what you also see sometimes is that uh, you just don't handle an exception, mm -hmm. and then you have the the exception will be outputted standard what PHP does, and then you write the output in the expect section. That's then when you also use the um, the expect f because you have like the file path in there. Uh, you want to you want to to have this um, out of the expect section. So you would use an expect f or an expect regex and create a regex that only matches the parts that you actually want to see. And then you don't need vardam. Like, no. but basically anything. The the nice thing about vardam is that it not only gives you the content of the variable, also the data types. You're checking multiple things at once. Thanks. Uh. Are there any guidelines besides what's mentioned in the documentation when it comes to uh, adding some, some test cases? I mean, obviously, contributions are welcome, but uh, is there any way to do proper contributions to save the reviewer's time, or there's no such thing? Um, you, could, you could check out uh, qa.php.net. There is, there is a documentation on how to write tests. There's the, um, the PHPD file documentation, so with all the other sections. Um, you also find, for example, um, let me see. Here there is one thing that, that's also mentioned is there is a send pass parameters none. Um, you don't need to write tests for these things. That's tested well enough that whenever you call a user land function and you give it an argument, that, but it doesn't expect an argument, or you give it too much or less arguments, then, then this fails. So this is tested well enough. You don't need to write tests for these, uh, for these guard clauses there. Um, Stuff yeah. like this you can find there. And also on phptestfest.org, there is some, some uh, documentation to get you started. Okay, that, that answers my question. Thank you. Welcome. Hey, uh, do you know how big part of PHP core code is tested? Um, like the, what's the coverage? Yep. The, the current line coverage um, for this binary that I have here locally, which has like, I think I only activated the Sealy binary that I need for this test. Um, so there's 40, 46 extensions are missing, but the, the coverage for this is 76% line coverage. So there's stuff to be tested. <laughs> then, thank you very much. And if you have any additional questions, I'll be around for the rest of the conference. <laughs>